Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the Global Muslim Social and Spiritual Impact Conference. I'm Dustin Cron, the founder of the Center for Global Muslim Life. We're here with my friend, my friend Christina Roundtree, and we are super excited to have her in this art section. Congratulations on the award for best uh, illust global Muslim illustrators. I love the work that you've been doing. I feel like you fit within the conference perfectly as someone who works full time in the social impact space, but then your art that is coming out beautifully on Instagram and in other spaces is really this idea of spiritual impact and, and, and uh, black Muslimness in the, Amer in the United States. So yeah, how are you, uh, you know, reflect on, on the, We'd love to have you reflect on the work that you've been doing. Sure. So I like them. Thanks for having me. Um, the work that I usually kind of do is based on centering black Muslim women. I do work with centering black Muslim men, but the whole idea behind my illustrations is that I wanted to show black Muslim women actively practicing their religion. It doesn't really have to do with fashion, but more so purpose um, within Islam. So that's kind of like the basic level of where I was coming up with all of my illustrations. I have a few that I'm gonna show you um, that I particularly like. Um, the first one that I wanna show you guys is one that got a lot of attention. A lot of people resonated with this. I call it home. It's of a Muslima woman on her prayer mat after Salat, and she's kind of just resting there in what she is kind of envisioning as her home. I like to say that Salat is where I can most closely resemble what home would feel like, but it would be heaven. It would be with your Lord, home. Um, and so a lot of people resonated with this, which I found very kind of morbid because it's kind of talking about death, but also reassuring because I was like, okay, other people feel this way too. Great. <laughs> um, but that got a lot of attention because the prayer mat, I put little houses on the border of the prayer mat also as kind of an Easter egg, um, double entendre to, for home. The idea. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and it could almost look like some masjids a little bit as well. It does. It looks like little Moroccan masjids in there too. Mashallah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a beautiful piece. Thank you. Uh, so the next one is, I entitled it Maryam. So this is the moment where a lot of sisters who don't wear hijab full time, um, but wear hijab for Salat, that moment where you, there's like a, an exhale that you take when you put on your hijab. And um, I really love this idea of coming back to yourself or the, in, in the seclusion of oneself within the prayer. Because at that point, when you put your hijab on and you're about to pin it, there's this moment of, it's just me and Allah, you know? Um, so I entitled this Maryam. It's kind of loosely based off of a um, inspiration from a poem by Sakina Pilgrim. She's based in the UK. And um, I put a lot of Akik jewelry on her because that's one of Sakina Pilgrim's favorite stones. <laughs> so I wanted to give a little homage to her um, by giving her Akik jewelry. And of course the baby blue and the white or cream veil is um, very symbolic of the Virgin Mary and most of her depictions. Yeah, it's really incredible to see you flipping, you know, racially also the the what's conceptualized as the Virgin Mary and to see see her as a beautiful black woman. I mean, it's it's really touching, beautiful piece. Thank you, thank you. So um, this is also one of my favorites. They're all my favorites. <laughs> all my ladies are my favorites. <laughs> Um, this one's entitled Goal. It is based off of one of my muses. Um, I spelled her name wrong there, but it's Iman Khalid. And um, she is a phenomenal educator based out of, the, um, based out of Dubai. And um, she's always emulated the gold standard of what it means to be a classy woman. 
especially from a lot of people in the Detroit area where I'm from. So um, with Iman's permission, um, not even, I just drew her. I needed to, I, had, I came upon a moment where I saw her. This is also um, kind of reminiscent of Renaissance depictions of prophets or um, the Virgin Mary as well with the gold halo behind and the four starred um, and baby blue background images. Um, that's also kind of like a Renaissance-y theme. And that's kind of what I was going for. It's classic. <laughs> she's classic. Um, and she is depicting the classic woman for, um, for a lot of us in Detroit. We love that black on black with the gold and the red lip. That's like a standard. <laughs> oh, I'm actually doing it right now. I didn't even realize. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's pretty much a standard for um, you know, if you want to dress up or if you want to um, emulate class, that's kind of where you go. Stunning. And so all of these are digital pieces, right? Have you have you thought about doing paintings of any of them or any or different mixed medium work with with any of these? So my goal is to have an art show. I already have a gallery that I love. Um, gallery Camille in Detroit. It's ran by Adnan Chapa, I want to say his last name is. Uh, I love everything that they do at that gallery. And so we've already been in talks about whether or not I can get in there. They said, of course, it's just a, it's a waiting game because of COVID. What I would like to do is do large prints of my illustrations and work with one or two um, different artists who can make specialty carvings for each of the illustrations. And I want it to be kind of like an African inspired design on wood carved um, mm -hmm. special canvases for my, for my illustrations. So that's something that I would love to do. Of course it costs money, everything does. So inshallah, with time, that'll be done. But yeah, that's kind of the goal of where I want to go. Inshallah. Yeah, I could see someone like an, an Ernesto Yarena type of, I don't know if you know his pieces, but definitely the multi-layer mm -hmm. indigeneity that he brings uh, to so much of his work, you know, pieces like that. that. I mean, they're incredible already, but inshallah, I pray that, you know, you're able to, to, to that Allah manifest that because it would be so beautiful. I mean, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so this is something I actually finished today. <laughs> I just finished this one. I call it waiting. Um, this is a depiction of a woman in a masjid just kind of waiting for her husband, for her sister, for somebody to hurry up, finish talking to whoever they're talking to so that they can get home. And I found it so ironic that we, found ourselves doing that often at masjids, at masjid dinners, fundraisers, lecture series, whatever it is that we're at the masjid for, maybe even Salah, that we would tap our foot, you know, to, to, to go, like, let's just go finish doing whatever we have to do for the day. And now that COVID has hit, there's so many of us that haven't been able to go to the masjid. And now we find ourselves missing those moments where we're sitting by the stained glass windows while we're, you know, um, sitting in the masala waiting for our sisters to finish talking to some girls about whatever. Um, it's such a melancholy heartbreak <laughs> because we miss something that we once really despised, <laughs> waiting for our carpool to finish up. Um, but now we miss it. So, now we miss everything. Yeah, exactly. So I just finished this piece today. Um, hopefully it goes well with my friends and my followers on Instagram. Yeah, I love, I, I, love like the, I love the stained glass. It reminds me of, uh, what is it, the uh, Northern Islamic, Northern California Islamic Center in downtown Oakland. You know, some of the stained glass they have in there. I don't Have you been in there? No, I haven't been in there. Yeah, it's kind of this old church, but then they redid some of the, the stained glass in an Islamic style. So, mashallah, that... Nice. Wherever you're pulling it from, from the, the ether, mashallah. Nice, nice. Yeah, I actually, um, this is this came straight from my mind. I had to piece all of this together separately. So I drew the stained glass windows separately um, and then saved them and then imported them into a new file, um, changed the dimension so that it was, you know, a little bit more 3D or 
obvious that she was sitting on the ledge. But um, I, this came from my mind, it came from a couple of different places. The white um, arabesque design um, is actually the same arabesque design behind Iman's um, picture, which is the gold one before. Mm. I repurposed it for this one. And then I don't know why I decided, yep, you can see it right in there in the gold. Oh. Okay. Um, the tulips and the grass and the other arabesque on below, that just came straight from me. I was just doodling <laughs> and I came up with something I liked. Awesome. Um, and then the prop, that came from, that is a very common stained glass um, design in a lot of different houses that were built in the 20s and 30s in Detroit. And it reminded me of the one that was above my grandmother's door or my grandmother and my grandfather's door, my um, paternal grandparents. And um, it's very old school and it just kind of reminds me of that. I used to hate going to their house, the Sakola, you know? <laughs> I used to just be like, oh, can we go home? But now I would, I would, I want for nothing more to just have one more opportunity to go to their house again. So that was um, a depiction of, um, just a typical stained glass window above the door um for a lot of houses in detroit a lot of old houses and with your art you're able to go there uh in in some way in some small way yeah yes exactly <laughs> yeah, be beautiful incredible to think about that and there's not enough uh islamic stained glass in the world there needs to be more so i really love that there definitely needs to be more i was thinking the same thing because when i was drawing this i was like oh i can just find a masjid that'll have this easy. And I couldn't find one to draw from, so I just drew my own. Um, so that in, in and of itself speaks for itself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Sink Swim. Uh, this is a piece that I drew after watching Ayana Sharif's um, film, short film called Wudu. And there's a moment in the short film, if you haven't seen it, you have to. It's really lovely. Um, yeah, we had, it in our, we had it in our film festival this year, and I think she won a uh, spiritual impact prize for short film, and we had her on the program. Oh, really? and yeah, amazing film. It is. It's really great. There's a moment where um, the music is very calming. It's, 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 there's um, spoken word, and the sister, she, she's wading in the water. And then all of a sudden she sinks beneath and the camera doesn't show what, what, what happens when she's underneath, but um, they start showing you imagery of um, police brutality um, and just horrible things within the world. And it, in my mind described to me as we can allow ourselves to sink or we can swim to the top and allow ourselves to, um, to be motivated to do more. Um, rather than letting the water take control of us, we take control of the water. Um, and so that was this moment that I drew of the sister that went underneath. She has a moment in time where she decides, okay, I could either sink to the bottom or I could swim up top. And it's up to the viewer to decide what she does. Mm. Mashallah, that's yeah, super beautiful. And I love that it's a reflection on that film, Mudu. Highly recommended. Everyone go find it on YouTube if you haven't seen it. Yeah. So my fall base, <laughs> this is, this is um, body positivity, of course. It also reminds me a lot of like basicness of loving fall and all things pumpkin spice everything. I was going to draw a pumpkin spice latte in her hand, actually, but I decided to have her holding her purse because of the wind instead. Um, I love this piece. This is one of my favorite pieces that I've drawn. Um, you don't see a lot of depictions of women um, who are plus size within illustrations. So that's one. Number two, you don't see a lot of darker skin toned black women in illustrations unless they're being um, kind of tokenized or objectified in some way. And when they're not, it's usually a fashion illustration. So I wanted to draw something that kind of showed something carefree, something that isn't too serious, um, of a woman that is very common. You see a lot of women who have darker skin tone, hijabi, and super fab fabulous, super fashionable, but also just like walking through the, those 
the cold fall wind. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. um, I drew this for that reason exactly. I wanted to depict women who don't get depicted often. And uh, I thought of her. Yeah, and I think that's, again, part of the reason why you have this work moves people in a spiritual way is the representation in all the different diverse ways as even a Muslim, a black Muslim going further into realms of, of, of diversity. So mashallah, it's super beautiful. Thank you. Uh, so Malika, this is based off of Amuse Malika Ayubi. She's a wonderful sister based here in Detroit. Um, she has an art collection called Malika Arts. She's a phenomenal calligrapher. Um, she's also just one of the souls that if people could float, she would be one of them. <laughs> she just kind of floats and, you know, gives these little pearls of wisdoms every now and then. And you have to really listen to what she says. And um, the answer will always be bigger prayer and salawat. It's something that I could definitely imagine her saying. And um, again, another depiction of a Muslim woman actively engaging in her, in her faith. Um, this is right after Salah. She's doing her thickers, um, and she has her oud burner. <laughs> That's kind of reminding her of these little phrases that she keeps in her heart. Um, a lot of people like this one. And I think, honestly, people like the ones that I get the most likes and the most responses on active depictions of, of, of women practicing their faith, mm -hmm. um, which I find very rewarding because that's my intention. Um, yeah, like you said, you get, there's just so much in the fashion space and that's the kind of overwhelming imagery of Muslim women on the internet is, is this idea yeah. of modest fashion and the way it's been globalized now. And props to those companies, mashallah, who are doing great work. But but it, it loses the faith component. And that's why I think this work, again, is so important. So thank you. Right. Thank you. So this was for a Salawat challenge by the Pearls of Islam. They suggested that you sing a, a poem or you sing a song or write a poem or any kind of artistic medium for the Salawat challenge that they have um, every year. And so I decided, and I do sing the sheets um, myself. I do play acoustic guitar and sing the sheets, but I decided I wanted to draw something because I hadn't seen anyone do that yet. So I took a picture of a woman that I found on the internet and I made her a black woman. <laughs> and um, I really took a lot of time. Obviously you can tell on the drum uh, and on her facial expressions. I really wanted to get that moment where you kind of lose yourself in the salawat. Um, mm. And I, uh, the carpet at the bottom is the same kind of carpet um, that is at one of the masjids that is in um, Michigan. So where everyone is pretty much like the sister. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows how to drum. They have a really big drum circle. They actually have a woman's nasheed group at that masjid. Oh, um, so, yeah, it's great. I love going there. If you're ever, you know, feeling the need to have a really great experience, come to this masjid in Michigan. <laughs> it's actually in Fenton. Um, What's it during called? During Ramadan. You'll have a blast. Um, it's literally called The Farm. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the Fenton, uh, the Fenton Spiritual Center, I think, the official name of it. Um, it's from the Naqshbandi Tariqa. MashaAllah. Yeah, and of course, Pearls of Islam won all kinds of awards in our Spiritual Impact Awards. As album of the year, my daughters have memorized that entire album and play it nonstop. It's so beautiful. So, yeah, thank Actually, you. Actually, I... I'm definitely a fan of theirs. I was in their um, their video for um, one of their music videos. <laughs> I love them. They're they're phenomenal sisters. Yeah, amazing music. And so yeah. So I'm ending on this note. I am as my servant thinks of me. Um, a really popular hadith that a lot of us know because what you engage in in terms of what kind of media you take in it definitely impacts your heart and it definitely impacts how you see yourself. If you see yourself 
um, truly as who you are, you're more likely to have the courage to practice um, your faith, to believe in yourself, to believe in Allah, um, and to have more courage. And so I am as my servant thinks of me. It's basically just my mantra over and over again. If I think God is merciful, then he will be. If I think that my, my media engagement is merciful, it will be. <laughs> so I'm just trying to make media engagement for other Black Muslim women more merciful and more representative of who they are. Mashallah. And not only that, I think that, that Black women, of course, and thank you for, for the, the work you did, but it was interesting that, that when we were putting together the awards, this sister from, um, from Iran reached out, uh, Golnar Servatian, Sir and she... And she was talking about this category. She's a designer that was chosen for best global Muslim illustrators as well. And so I think that, and she was talking about uh, the the stigma against illustrators and especially female illustrators in Iran and, and the work that she's, and then I go and Google her, right? Having not heard of her and she's designed all these children's books uh, all over the world. And, mm -hmm. and so the, there may be that stigma locally. So I think the group of you that were, that were chosen for the awards are representative of, of, of this beauty and and really incredible spiritual impact. So again, uh, just thank you for your work and, and everything that you're doing. Thank you for acknowledging it. I appreciate it so much. It's it's good when when the work is seen, you know, and I feel seen. So thank you for that. Yeah, of course. And then and we yeah, we pray for we need those. I know I would love to buy one of those, you know, prints for again for my daughters. And I think that we need those types of of posters on our walls and, and beautiful pieces of arts on our, on our wall. So, you know, we pray that that, that comes to fruition, inshallah. Inshallah, I mean. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, and, and for showing us a different side also. I think the other piece that's not depicted there is is just the, the yeah, like you said, the, the Muslimah and Salah, sure, but then also the dhikr, the nasheed, the, the deeper spiritual uh, areas that sometimes maybe people who may not be connected to our community may have never even seen. And so you're making that super exactly. scene as well. Yeah. Exactly. So thank you, it's great connecting with you again. And uh, yeah, so check, where can people find you? So you can find me on Instagram, Stina, S-T-I-N-A dot Michelle dot tree. Um, on Instagram, I have all of my postings there. I also post on Facebook a lot, but I just do it through my personal Facebook account, so it's a lot easier to follow me through Instagram. Okay, mashallah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Wa alaikum salam. <laughs> <laughs>